There are two main takeaways from this video, two main things we're gonna learn in this video. The first one is that there's a difference between the internet and the World Wide Web. And then the second one is we're gonna look at the history of the World Wide Web and get a little backstory on how the World Wide Web came into being, okay? So the first thing to know is that this, there is, yes, a difference between the internet and the World Wide Web. A lot of people use those terms interchangeably. But people who know better, who are into web programming and creating websites and technology and all that, and computers, computer science, uh, there's a difference between the Internet and the World Wide Web. So the Internet started in the 60s, right? It was this communication network for having continuous communication, and it's based upon packet switching instead of circuit switch networks. So it started in the 60s. That was the Internet. In the early 1990s, that is when the World Wide Web started. You can think of the Internet as all of the hardware. So it's all of the cables, all of the routers, all of the computers, all of the servers, all of the modems, all of the satellites, right? You could think of that as the internet. There's actually a really great talk. What is the internet really? A TED talk. And here you can see a picture of that TED talk and of a ship laying fiber optic cable across the ocean. So the internet is all that physicality, all of the hardware that makes this communication possible. The World Wide Web is a service which runs on that hardware, the internet. There are other services which run on the internet, like Telnet or FTP, File Transfer Protocol. So the, the World Wide Web is just another service running on that hardware, which is the internet. All right, so now for a little bit of the history of the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web was created by Tim Berners-Lee. Incredible, one man created the World Wide Web. This is the father of the World Wide Web, not the father of the internet, the father of the World Wide Web. And uh, Tim Berners-Lee was working at a place called CERN. CERN stands for the Center for European Nuclear Research, except in Europe you say Center for European Research Nuclear. <laughs> they switch them for some reason. And there's a really beautiful picture of the Large Hadron Collider Particle Accelerator. It's one of the things CERN is doing today. But Tim Berners-Lee was working at CERN, and in 1980 he had this idea for hypertext where a document, you could click a link, and it'd take you to another document. So you could say, go see the source, and you'd click it and it'd take you to the source. And he created a little program called Inquire, where he was trying to get that working. Then, uh, you know, the idea of hypertext, this is the definition of it right here, is text with, with links which can be clicked to take you somewhere else. We all probably pretty much know that now. And notice here that there's hypertext, and hypertext is a hyperlink. Hypertext has hyperlinks. And then there's hypertext markup language and the hypertext transfer protocol. So just kind of like see how that hypertext idea goes through HTML, HTTP, hyperlinks, right? So that's where that's all going. In 1989, he wrote a paper where he proposed having a large hypertext database with typed links. And so that was really sort of him envisioning the World Wide Web. And he had different names for the World Wide Web. He thought about calling the information mesh or the information mine or mine of information, but he settled on the World Wide Web. I think it's a good choice. Imagine if we were calling it the information mesh. <laughs> it doesn't quite have the same ring. Uh, and then in 1990, he created the first like HTTP, the hypertext transfer protocol and hypertext markup language. And he created the first browser and he also created the first web server to sort of respond to requests. So when somebody said, hey, show me a page, the web server would say, here's the page. Right. Well, what does a browser do? What's the role of a browser? A browser will take all of that HTML right right there and it'll convert it to this. Right. So browser looks at this code and turns it into this. And so I put together a really simple little example here and we could go to this little pen and I'm just going to take that out for a second. So before the World Wide Web, when you sent text over the Internet, this is how it arrived at your computer It's just a big page of text. And so scientists, academics, researchers, people at CERN were sending documents, research papers back and forth to each other across the Internet. But when they arrived, it was just a bunch of text like that. There was no formatting to it. So Tim Berners-Lee was like, wouldn't it be nice if we could do something like that and we could have headings? And so some just really basic markup, like marking up the text, and we could do things like, hey, make this a heading, put a, a markup on each side saying this is a heading, H1 heading, and we're going to learn all about those tags in a minute. Then we could start formatting our documents. So that was really like, you know, one of the inspiring ideas 
of the internet. But to do that, you have to take that text right there and you have to have a piece of software to convert it and show it like this. You have to take this text right here and you have to have a piece of software, a browser, to convert it and show it like this. So that's what the browser does. It takes the HTML, the hypertext markup language, and renders it into a web page, a page which has some formatting, interprets all that. So there's different browsers out in the marketplace. Uh, and here's a list from Can I Use, and we're going to be using Can I Use a lot in this course. And Can I Use allows you to check the functionality of different HTML or CSS things, and, uh, and it shows you which browsers support it. But I just kind of showed this here so you could start to become familiar with Can I Use. Don't worry, we'll get into it. And, and here are the different browsers listed out, Internet Explorer, Edge, which is, you know, the... Uh, supersedes Internet Explorer. It's the next next thing that Microsoft has released, the next browser Microsoft has released. Firefox, Chrome, Safari, all the different browsers. So there's a bunch of different browsers out there. We're going to be using, using Google Chrome in this course. You could, if you want, get Google Chrome Canary. So that's good for you to know about. Canary is like the cutting edge, the newest release of Google Chrome. And if you're a developer, you could use Canary to see what is the latest and the greatest. Uh, so in 1991, the web was uh, switched on. That was when the first web servers outside of CERN were switched on. So in 1990, it was only running inside CERN. Here's the first web page. And just a little look back at where we've been. This was Yahoo in 1996. This was uh, Google in 1998. There's Facebook in 2005. Looks a little bit like conspiracy like CIA for some reason. I don't know why I think that. And then there's this great website owned by Amazon called Alexa, which ranks all of the different websites in the world based upon which one is the most popular. And so uh, you could go check that out. So you've learned some good things in this video. You've learned that the internet and the World Wide Web are two different things. The internet started in the late 60s. The World Wide Web started in the early 90s, in 1990. And then in 1991, the World Wide Web was opened up to the world. And uh, you've also learned a little bit about the history of the World Wide Web. So Tim Berners-Lee is the father of the World Wide Web. And there's this entire concept of hypertext. And hypertext is text with hyperlinks. And we use hypertext markup language to create documents that have hyperlinks. And then we transfer those with the hyper, with the HTTP hypertext transfer protocol. And so that's where all that hyper stuff is going in. And uh, it seemed like there's one more thing I wanted to say to you. And, and, and one of the main motivating factors of creating the web was being able to have headings and documents <laughs> instead of just receiving a bunch of text. Let's mark it up. And then that markup's really gotten pretty complex these days, you know, pretty full featured and fully functional. So we could create really nice looking web pages. So we send all of this code. We saw that code, you know, when we looked at uh, this right here, escape, control T, when we go into developers console. And so I'm just gonna right click Google and choose inspect. And uh, we see all this code down here. So this is the code that was sent to our computer, and then our browser takes this code and turns it into that. So that's a history of the World Wide Web and the difference between the World Wide Web and the Internet and Tim Berners-Lee being the father of the World Wide Web and browsers rendering all of that HTML that they receive and showing it as a nice web page. Good information.